It's now getting towards a flood rather than a trickle of resignations from Boris Johnson's government, but he insists he is going to fight on. He's just given his weekly Prime Minister's questions session in the House of Commons, showing absolutely no signs of resigning at this point, despite all the criticism that is coming his way from his own lawmakers about his integrity, about his leadership, about his decision-making. Boris Johnson says despite the scandals and controversies that have dogged his administration in recent days, weeks and months, he will be fighting on. He says if there were to be another vote of confidence in his leadership, he believes he would win. He believes he has the support of the majority of Conservative MPs, lawmakers in in the House of Commons. But many Conservatives will tell you they believe that Boris Johnson's time is nearly up, that it is a question now of when, not if, he's removed as their leader and therefore UK Prime Minister. Back to you. All right. Thank you very much. Joining us for reaction, uh, former advisor to Margaret Thatcher and President Trump, John Brown, and columnist for American Spectator, Jeffrey Lord. OK, John, uh, is this the end for Boris Johnson? And if so, why? I don't think so. He's done very well over Brexit and the Ukraine and NATO. He did make two major errors of judgment. One was over his party gate during the COVID lockup, and the other was that he was very slow to fire a gay um, whip who was groping people. That was a big mistake. But what you see is naked ambition of politicians at senior levels putting themselves and their careers way before the country and even their party, because if there's a split in the party, that means the winning the next election is very much more difficult. Now, what happens is that normally prime ministers control are, are there by virtue of the backbench members of parliament voting for them and the conservative establishment. But Boris Johnson is different. He, like Reagan and Trump, rely on grassroots support. And, and that, that is got. And that bypasses all these people. I think it's totally irresponsible as all these minnows of people have arrived to do a whale's job in threatening Joris Johnson. What they're really threatening in their own interest, of course, is a conservative government and the country because the Labour Party are really woke. And what has happened in the old days, the prime minister appointed his next leader or the leader of the party, rather, appointed his next leader of the party, who, if they had a majority in parliament, he became prime minister. Then it was put to the members of parliament. And so it got more democratic and more political jostling for position. Yeah. Now it's put out to the whole party at grassroots. And that is the underlying strength of Boris Johnson. OK, um, and I'm going to ask you one more question before I, I get to Jeffrey, because Jeffrey doesn't have an English accent, so I, I can't believe anything he says. Uh, <laughs> but uh, one of the strongest allies, uh, Michael Gove, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his, his name. Feel free to correct me. But this has been somebody that's been very strongly behind. He, as a senior cabinet member, has called for Boris Johnson to step down and yet Boris Johnson remains. So why is that? Why is he asking him to step down and why is he fighting it? Well, of course, as I said before, this is naked ambition. Gov reckons he would, he, in fact, Boris Johnson beat him for the presidency, for the prime ministership anyway. And now he wants to get back mm. and he thinks he's pretty senior and he's appeared to be loyal whilst people are watching. All the time, of course, there's backbench stabbing in quiet. And now he sees his chance to hell with a country, to hell with a conservative majority. Just put me as the leader and I'll run it. And the same with these other people who give given very prestigious jobs of foreign secretaries, about four foreign, or three previous foreign secretaries and the present foreign secretary. It's ambition and it's, it's a ghastly scene. Yeah. But I think they've met their match in Boris Johnson. Okay. Boris Johnson's power lies with grassroots, not with the party establishment and the backbench members of parliament. Well, uh, Jeffrey, let me ask you this. We do know Boris Johnson's been very much a leader. He's been a strong leader in NATO, uh, dealing with Ukraine. Um, would, would this create some problems uh, with the economic alliances we have, with the military alliances we have, with dealing with Russia? Uh, what would happen, you think, Jeffrey? Sure, I'm sure it would when you have, the, if, if you have that kind of change, rippling there. And, and uh, let me just say that if there is this kind of chain, I vote for John Brown as his uh, successor. <laughs> um, 
But, uh, you know, <laughs> Too late, I'm afraid. The... <laughs> and John knows far more about this than I do, but I have read my fair share about this. And one of the stories that comes to mind, and John will get what I'm saying, John is talking exactly about the kind of backroom wheeling and dealing that goes on in the British Parliament at moments like this. And I just went back and took a check of uh, Andrew Roberts' biography of Winston Churchill. And in essence, the same sort of thing pushed Churchill out of the prime ministership in 1955. And for the rest of his life, he couldn't stand Anthony Eden, who had been his uh, foreign minister. They said he had a cold hatred of Anthony Eden. Uh, Eden, on the other hand, like some of these people I suspect right now, thought that Winston had overstayed his welcome and wanted him gone. Yeah. So this kind of thing, the British system does this in a way that the American presidential system doesn't do. So now, if a it, prime minister... It, Go ahead, John. It's interesting that so many of them have come from the Foreign Office, and as Jeffrey has rightly put Eden, of course, the main Conservative Party has always felt that the Foreign Office was full of charm and the whiff of eau de cologne, charming <laughs> foreign countries, and not really holding fast to British interests. It right. was the same in my Parliament, when Francis Pym and all his people were fired by Margaret Thatcher for not really yeah. hold, fighting for British interests and trying to be too diplomatic and kind and go to all these parties abroad and around the world. Yeah, John, let me ask you this before we go. Uh, if the he steps down, uh, either willingly or otherwise, uh, the majority party has to elect a new leader. Uh, some names have been thrown around, names like Liz Truss, Foreign Secretary Jeremy Hunt, uh, Defense Minister Ben Hunt, who's been a very supportive of Ukraine. Uh, are any of those possible leaders... Uh, that, that could step in, in your mind? Well, I said before, I think all these are minnows coming to do a whale's job. Uh, of, the, of the minnows, I would pick the largest one, I think, is Liz Truss. She's been an exceptionally good uh, uh, minister. The others, uh, I mean, all these, uh, Garvin, all these people are real knife throwers. And okay. the, as Jeffrey said, the House of Commons is known for it, and it, in my day, it was called a viper's pit. Okay, very good. John Brown and Jeffrey Lord, thank you, gentlemen.